Hi friends, this is Surya and today we are going to talk about foreign words in English language and introduction uh, of uh, various uh, foreign words into English language. Uh, also we shall be talking about how English language developed over the course of centuries and also we shall be talking about uh, in this very first part we shall be talking about Italian words and we will discuss a few Italian words. Uh, now this uh, video is specially made for people who are preparing for MBA, bank, SSC, banking exams like SBIPO, IBPSPO and, um, and uh, IFT, uh, Industrial Foreign Trade, uh, SNAP, CLAT, there is Common Law Admission Test and NLUs. That is NLU Delhi, ILET and all, all those people who are preparing for these exams. I hope this uh, video solves your purpose of knowing some foreign words. Now uh, we shall be talking about uh, uh, where do these words come from basically and why why did these words come into English language now English as we all know is a blend of words from many languages as we have as I have already written here and these words made their way into English languages many in many ways first of all a lot of uh, uh, foreign countries invaded England and left their you know, word imprint of words into those in, in that particular country which we gradually made its way into the language English language uh, secondly, uh, English, uh, I mean Britain also uh, kept on invading various nations and whatever cultural inheritance it had from various, uh, various countries uh, subjected a few words to English language and those words made it their way into English language. So we shall be talking about the evolution of English language first. So uh, first is like uh, the Greek and uh, you know Latin have had the biggest influence on English and why so uh, because if you see the Mediterranean Sea out here uh, and we see that um, this this particular land it, this particular land which I have shown this in in, in blue color now this was the area wherein uh, Mediterranean means what middle land the terrain means land and mid means middle so middle land and uh, we can see a lot of countries like uh, Italia that is Italy and we have uh, here we have Britannia Britannia is like England these are the old names basically so, and and we have France as well we have a lot of lot of nations and this particular area this particular belt is known as uh, Mediterranean land and in this land the oldest uh, civilizations which developed were the Greek and the Roman uh, civilization and their language and the most uh, old on in fact the oldest language to come into uh, existence out here was uh, uh, the Greek language it was the first western written language and it was uh, it was basically uh, spread by Alexander the Great and he was a great leader responsible for first, uh, spread of the Greek Empire. Understand the fact that Alexander went to various countries and uh, invaded various countries and uh, uh, Greek as a language was, uh, you know, uh, was dispersed into various nations and that is why uh, and as they had, you know, it's written here that as they had empire that included lands bordering Eastern Mediterranean Sea, Persia, Egypt, the Greek language and culture spread uh, throughout this region. And that is why we see that a lot of languages which uh, have developed in this particular area have uh, Greek words in origin. Later we will come to know as to why these, these you know, uh, these countries have uh, a lot in common with Latin as well. So now we shall be talking about, I mean, after the fall of the Greek Empire, uh, the Roman uh, influence was very strong. Rome, Rome, as we know, was in existence in Italy and uh, it was a very powerful empire and the Latin was the language spoken in ancient Rome. Rome. And ad, as uh, when the Romans conquered territories, including most of Europe, they brought their language to those countries. That is why there are so many words in English language that have Latin roots. So uh, Romans uh, basically uh, controlled a very uh, wide area if you see, I mean it, uh, it has, you know, if you see this part Italia and Rome out here, Rome was in this particular region and it controlled a very, uh, this Roman Empire was quite a, a big empire and Latin was the official language there. Moreover, the churches which, uh, the Catholic churches which developed out of Italy and, and spread across the world, they had the official language as their official language was Latin. So uh, doesn't matter which area it was in, the church was in, doesn't matter which people uh, served into the churches. Uh, 
despite that the official language was latin so across the world across the world if you see all the churches catholic churches used latin as their language and that is why uh, in most of the countries across this region we see latin as a very common and connecting language which has basically given birth to many words in 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 the in various languages uh, similarly I have see the some powerful were britain the britain uh, um, the british empire and romans and you know greek empire these all had a very uh, they were very powerful nations and their language language had a lot of influence in the uh, you know uh, other countries now if you see there are the four major languages in that region the romance languages and these romance languages came out of to birth of latin, out of latin why latin because uh, as i have already told you that catholic churches operated in officially in latin and out of that italian spanish portuguese and french these four languages came into existence and that is why we see a very close connection in italian spanish portuguese and french uh, so these are romance languages which took birth out of latin in fact i would say that these languages are actually uh, a variant of latin as a language so uh, and how these words got into the english language now english if you see this way i would like to show the here english if you see this empire is a bit away from the mainland and the point to be uh, you know uh, to be noted here is how did english uh, how these did these words get into english language so the roman empire expanded to britain bringing latin as i already told you latin was the official language of the romans and latin words found their way into anglo saxon uh, saxon language of the british in ancient britain for example uh, latin word stratum means layered road and this word is later became known as straits and now it is known as street in modern english so similarly miles was miles uh, uh, was uh, used in latin uh, it comes from the word mille and that means thousand paces so miles also that is a unit of measurement comes out of latin now english language this is how english as we know today evolved over centuries influenced by many other european languages all right now uh, later on from 550 to you know like 1100 ad we see that uh, now a uh, lot many countries invaded britain bringing lot many countries in uh, lot many uh, words of different languages into british uh, that is english uh, for example as i've written here you see anglians from the area that is now netherlands invaded in 550 uh, so people from this uh, area went to britain and added to british uh, language that is english uh, Vikings from uh, Scandinavia invaded in 875 AD. So these people, you know, came down to you know this area and added a lot. Finally, Normans from northern France invaded in 1066 AD. And um, in fact, very interesting thing is that when the French went to England and they invaded England, uh, they banned English as a language there. So most of the people there started using French. And when the French uh, when the uh, French left from from England, uh, people there had a lot of words from French added into their native language, and that is how we see an influ influence of French into English to be very very strong. Now, all these invaders brought their languages which influenced English language. These influences can be traced through a terminology as we study root words, and we see that we study different kinds of words like Latin, French, Italian, uh, Japanese, and we see that uh, the roots of these languages are into English and we see a lot of words coming out of coming out of these languages in english language now uh, as i have to influence of catholic church was very very uh, strong in developing english english language and uh, it's written there so no matter what country all services in the catholic church were spoken in latin and all priests and church officially spoke uh, latin guys now uh, renaissance was one one uh, event which actually uh, which actually uh, brought in a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, it was the birth of literature, it was a literary movement and uh, many uh, writings were done during this time and that is why we see that uh, uh, the, the, the language dispersion was very strong in this particular era. Now, uh, as we see that influence continu continues today as well and a lot of, uh, we keep on adding new words to English language every year. 
And now if you see uh, England from the 1600 to 1900, now before it was, uh, I mean, from uh, 500 to 1100, 1200, we saw that uh, England was being invaded by different nations. Now England was invading different nations. Uh, in this map particularly, if you see all the stars, red stars which you see are the colonies of the English Empire. So we can imagine guys uh, how uh, strong the effect of English Empire was in between 1600 and 1900s including India. If you see England, India was quite a big uh, colony of the English Empire. So uh, and that is why we see, if you see these all countries are tremendously into effect of English language and if you see that way uh, whenever wherever these people went they left a deep mark of English as a language to to the people today as we see uh, English in India like of, of, of a lot of people in India, like approximately 60% of the total population of India, either speaks English or understands English. So that is a very huge number. And all those countries which are left develop their indigenous language. You see this, if you see this part, Russia, China, Kazakhs, Mongolians, they, they, and, and in fact, in Europe also, if you see Europe also, they, these people, this particular area does not speak English and they're not very fond of English because they were never the uh, colonies of the English empire. And all those countries which were the colony of the English empire, uh, we may see that they are very good, you know, English speakers. Now, uh, why you should learn uh, uh, root words uh, because you will recognize word chunks in in in, familiar, in unfamiliar words and be able to narrow down the possible meaning of the word. It will help you with vocabulary in many subject areas. You'll be better able to pronounce unfamiliar words and you'll become a better speller. And since many languages have common roots in Latin and Greek, it makes learning foreign language easier. So that is one of the major reasons why you should learn root words. Moreover, uh, uh, if you talk about um, uh, vocabulary so english language has the sea of uh, you know words and it is very difficult to remember all these words guys so it is always good to learn english words in a very organized manner and root words do really help okay now all those people who are writing competitions i'm sure uh, if you will make sure that you have a very good command over uh, vocabulary and that is very easily possible if at all you are familiar with uh, root words now in this particular um, uh, screen uh, you see italian words which are usually used in english language so in this particular video i'll be talking about italian words being used in english language and in the next session i shall be talking about latin uh, words which are used in english language so the first word as i see uh, the the red which is written in red is the root word and what is written in black is the meaning so first of all this word is el fresco el fresco means in the open air so el fresco is also used for restaurant like you know el fresco dinner so that means dinner is in open air for that sense second word is arcade arcade is a series of arch, arch, arches uh, arches supported by columns spires or pillars common passageway through uh, way with uh, shops or stalls so arcade means you know you must have seen uh, in 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 lot of sh lot of uh, you know like for example if you go in delhi uh, Connaught place or in lucknow if you go to hazrat ganj we see the the uh, the shops are in a well fashioned way and they all have a series of arches supported by columns and pyres so that particular uh, style is known as arcade similarly eri uh, this is uh, eri ven derechi eri ven derechi is a farewell remark goodbye for now so uh, it is written as CI, but it is read as Aravindachi. So that is how it is. It's like goodbye. Uh, similarly, bandit. Bandit means uh, bandit queen, a like movie IT. I'm sure you must, uh, you know, relate to that and you will understand the meaning. It's a criminal or a brigand or, or a crook. Similarly, uh, a cameo. Cameo is a technique of uh, engraving in relief on gem, stone, a small but noticeable role in a play or a move uh, or a film or a movie. Uh, cameo roles hote hain. Aapne dekha hoga. You must have seen like you know uh, in in some movie we see uh, somebody playing a cameo role. Uh, for example, uh, this particular movie uh, in Tube Light. I have heard this that uh, Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, or no, not in Tube Light. Was well, Tube Light? Yes, Tube Light. Shah Rukh Khan played some cameo role. Uh, and a canto, any kind of principal division of a long poem. So the, the important part of a long poem is known as a canto. Caprice, sudden impulsive notion or action, sudden unpredictable change. Somebody who changes instantly is, is, is you know, that, that uh, behavior is known as caprice. Now, caress is gentle affection, you know, caressing somebody. That means uh, give, provide, uh, giving a uh, gentle tap or maybe, you know, uh, 
affection, touching or stroking. Now caricature, caricature is exaggerated representation of a comic, comic effect. So caricature banate hain hum log so. Now carnival, carnival is season, casino, place for gambling. Shay uh, sarasara, that means whatever will be, will be. So this is shay uh, sarasara, whatever will be, will be. Uh, Cicerone, Cicerone is a guide who conducts or informs साइट सीयर सो सिसरॉन होता है जो आप लोगों को साइट्स वगैरह दिखाता है गाइड बेसिकली कॉग्नोसेंटे कॉग्नोसेंटे इज अ पर्सन ऑफ एक्सपर्ट नॉलेज कॉनोश सो कॉग्नोसेंटे मतलब होता है समबडी हु इज वेरी वेरी गुड एट सम सब्जेक्ट दलतांते इज अ मेजर नॉन प्रोफेशनल बिगनर डबलर टायरो नाउ दीस वर्ड्स समबडी हु इज नॉट पॉलिश्ड एट प्रोफेशन इज नोन एज दलतांते और अ न्यू बिगनर बेसिक अ बिगनर दैट्स हाउ इट इज ना डॉल्चेविता डॉल्चेविता इज अ लाइफ ऑफ कंफर्ट और luxury or uh, vita means life basically and dolce means luxury so uh, that's how you know this word gets gets into pleasure or luxury uh, similarly we have this word like fiasco fiasco is a failure or disaster uh, macaroni is a kind of food uh, nepotism karan johar is usually opposed of nepotism nepotism is favoritism based on kinship uh, parapet Uh, a low protective wall or railing around the edge of a roof parapet uh, piazza is a public square and it it's a name basically or it, usually it means a public place uh, prima donna is the leading female singer in an opera and prima donna also referred to a person who is very temperamental or who keeps on shouting you know so prima donna a regatta is a series of boat races and uh, sentinel is a guard sequin is a small shiny ornamental disc or metal or plastic so sequin ka matlab hota hai koi bhi cheez jo metal ya plastic ki bani hoti hai aur chamakti hai bahut usko sequin bolte hain aur sonata is like um, uh, a musical composition which is in two or three parts uh, piano mein basically use hota hai i have written already yes uh, sonnet is a 14 line poem as most people know here uh, soto uh, uh, soto uh, vose uh, so to walk at them basically is go a uh, very softly as not to be heard in an undertone or mutter to speak very uh, you know uh, murmur basically so to uh, so to uh, spaghetti spaghetti is a kind of food uh, uh, stiletto stiletto is a small dagger it's, it's a kind of knife and uh, stiletto is also known as you know hindi mein pencil heel bolte hain aajkal log ladkiyan pehenti hain stiletto yeah uh, फिर नेक्स्ट वी हैव स्टको स्टको इज प्लास्ट ऑफ पेरिस से डिजाइनिंग वगैरह जो छत पे करते हैं दैट इज स्टको एंड टर्नतुला इज अ इज अ काइंड ऑफ स्पाइडर विथ लॉर्ड ऑफ हेयर यू मस्ट हैव सीन ब्राउन लॉर्ड ऑफ हेयर नॉट यूजुअली फाउंड इन इंडिया इट इज यूजुअली फाउंड इन द वेस्टर्न नेशंस सो this is these are the words from from uh, you know uh, italian from italy and they have made the, it made their way into english and they are usually were used in english language so we'll very quickly we'll revise these words and make sure that you remember these words so st uh, starting from the uh, last word tarantula is a spider stucco is a uh, uh, plaster of paris design basically stiletto is Uh, is a small dagger or basically pencil heel spaghetti is a kind of food so the way is very to murmur and uh, sonnet is a 14 line poem sonata is a musical composition sequin is a small shiny ornamental disc sentinel is a guard regalia is a boat regatta is a boat race uh, prima donna is a woman who keeps on shouting remember but piazza is a per, is, is kind of public place especially is a place in italy uh, parapet is a railing basically nepotism somebody famous kinship करण जौहर से याद रहेगा नेपोटिज्म मैक्रोनी इज अ फूड एंड फियास्को इज फेलियर सिमिलरली एल्फ्रेस्को विल स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट लाइन एल्फ्रेस्को इज इन ओपन रेयर एल्फ्रेस्को रेस्टोरेंट होता है आर्केड इज व्हाट आर्च इज वो जो डिजाइन हजरतगंज और सीपी में देखने को मिलता है एंड गुड बाय इज एरिवेट दर्शी सो दैट्स फेयर गुड बाय बैंडिट इज बैंडिट बैंडिट क्वीन केमियो इज अ शॉर्ट रोल Canto is long poem ka chhota sa division. Caprice is being in uh, somebody who is very much into uh, always temperamental. Uh, Careless means caring. Caricature is caric wo, comic effect. Kisi bhi yadmi ka comic effect ke comics ki tarhi. Matlab usme what do you call it? Uh, Arey 
making some some comic face of some person uh, that is caricature. Carnival is a festival, a casino. You know, everybody knows. You know, Shesara Sara. That means whatever will be will be. Nobody can change it. Uh, it's a saying basically. Cicerone is guide. Uh, Cognoscente is a person of great knowledge. Delitante is a beginner, and Dolce Vita is a, a very uh, comfortable and a luxurious life. So I hope this uh, video uh, helps you people. Um, revise it three or four times, go through it three or four times and I'm sure you will all remember it. In the next video possibly I'll be talking about uh, Latin words and, and, and um, uh, French words and uh, uh, German words, Japanese words which have made their way into English language and uh, interestingly we will also be making a video wherein Hindi words have made into English and that, is, that will be, uh, I'm sure it will be very interesting. Uh, now uh, this uh, this uh, is this this video is from Funda Makers. It's a cat preparation institute in Lucknow, and uh, you can like us, subscribe us, share us. Uh, our links are you can visit our Facebook page that is facebook.com slash Funda Makers. Um, subscribe for update of other videos. Uh, get in touch with us. You can call me at nine six seven zero six zero six seven seven seven. I repeat, my number is nine six seven zero six zero six seven seven seven. All those people who are preparing for CAT, Bank, SSC, CLAT may get in touch with me and uh, I'll be very happy to help you guys. Thank you so much. God bless you. May you have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead. Bye. Take care. Thank you.